Hi, Dr. Brian Kaufman, the Chief Medical Officer, Executive Vice President of the CLL Society here at ASH 2023. And I'm Maziar Shadman. I'm an Associate Professor at Fred Hodge Cancer Center and University of Washington in Seattle, Washington. One of the moves that I'm seeing happening is combining all oral therapies and also limiting the duration of those therapies for frontline treatment of CLL and you are going to share with us some trials that you've got, you're excited about and that may be an interesting option for patients. Absolutely. So our goal is to get rid of chemotherapy. I mean, I think that, that goal has We've been pretty achieved, successful, right? yeah. yeah. And now the next is, okay, we don't want to treat forever, so we want to fix duration, non-chemotherapy, and we want to have it without any infusion. So it's an all-oral fixed duration novel agent. And that's the direction we're moving forward and you know we're almost there. So the two important clinical trials with using novel agents are are the following. One of the one of the studies that is ongoing currently currently and is really rapidly enrolling is the MAGIC trial. And this is a randomized trial that is comparing a combination of a calabrutinib and venetoclax versus a standard of care, which is venetoclax and obinutuzumab. So the study randomizes patients to receive one of the two treatments and uh, trying to ask the question of is a Cala plus Ven better or at least as good as uh, venetoclax or venetuzumab. Both excellent therapies. Both excellent therapies and st the study in fact a a asks a second question which is also very very important. So after at the end of one year what if patients have detectable measurable residual disease or MRD? Our current practice based on the uh, published data for venetoclax or venetuzumab is to, in, in general, to stop at the end of one year and the MRD data we use it for different reasons and maybe in some patients we continue therapy, but in general, we're not acting on that MRD information. So the study has that aspect in it that if you have detectable disease at the end of one year, you go another year with treatment. So an important study, again, the MAGIC trial, still ongoing, and uh, we're expecting for enrollment to be completed in the next few months. And again, comparing a calabrutinib plus venetoclax to venetoclax and obinutuzumab. Now, the story continues. So we have another BTK inhibitor, zanabrutinib, which is also very effective and better than ibrutinib from the efficacy standpoint in a head-to-head -head trial. We also have a new BCL2 inhibitor. So venetoclax is the only BCL2 inhibitor around, and now we have a new drug. Uh, Dr. Khan Tam uh, at this meeting at ASH 2023 presented very exciting data uh, combining xanobrutinib with sonrotoclax, and sonrotoclax is a new BCL2 inhibitor like venetoclax with a few differences. Number one, it seems to be much stronger than venetoclax, maybe 10 times. Number two has a much shorter half life, half which life is good of four in hours, this case. which is great because it gives us the opportunity of maybe going up on the dose a little bit faster. And more importantly, what he showed was amazing that despite being such a strong drug, there was no case of tumor lysis syndrome, e e the clinical or e either even lab TLS with the ramp up that they're using. And tumor lysis syndrome is when you kill too many cancer cells at once, overwhelm the kidneys. and Exactly. Cause. And that's a side effect that we think about a lot when we're using venetoclax or drugs in this class. So you have a stronger drug. So the first question is, what about the risk factor? What about the toxicity? I'm sorry. And you know, in this study that Dr. Tam presented, this drug is a strong and it's also not causing tumor lysis syndrome with this ramp up strategy. And with a short follow up, uh, less than a year, but none of the patients relapsed with the combination in the first line. So the idea now is to, there's a study that will open enrollment in early 24, I should say, maybe end of 23, there are probably going to be patients who start treatment in this trial. And this is another head-to-head -head randomized trial, which is comparing fixed duration venetoclax or venetuzumab, the current standard of care, with a one-year combination of xanobrutinib and sonrotoclax, and that would be one year with the combination. So 
uh, one of the best in class PTK inhibitors, the only one that has been superior to ibrutinib, plus sunrotoclax, as I mentioned, has there are many reasons to believe that it will be the best BCL2 inhibitor in class. It's too early to say that, but it does have the potential. So the study is an international global trial uh, and is a registration trial, meaning that if, if it's successful, we'll eventually uh, uh, bring label and approval in many countries uh, potentially for the combination of xanobrutinib and sunrotoclax. So again, great options and you know combining pills together, avoiding infusion. We already have passed the chemotherapy time and we want to treat patients for fixed duration. So um, and this, the, the two, these two studies are both very practical, very relevant, very reasonable. And I always tell my patients, if you, unless there is a good reason not to want a clinical trial, these are very practical studies and make a lot of sense from the clinical standpoint. Well, I've always argued that you get your best care in a clinical trial and you Absolutely. get options to the best uh, drugs uh, before they're commercially available. So I'm a big fan of clinical trials, as you know, when you helped me with my clinical trial uh, of my CAR-T, JCAR-014, you know, six, seven years ago, which was a very good move for me. So I'm a big believer in clinical trials, and these ones in particular are exciting because it has an all oral option, and it's a limited duration, and we don't know yet, because that's why we're doing the trials, but it, what we do know with a lot of patients who've done well with venetoclax is if they can get to undetectable measurable residual disease, they can have a really long glide path of being treatment free uh, for a long time, we've seen that with some of these other trials where people are five, six years out. Very exciting without needing treatment. And if they do need treatment, they can use the venetoclax or the BTK inhibitors again, Absolutely. and they work. Absolutely. So these are really exciting to have these treatment-free periods. This is a glorious time. Any final thoughts on, yeah. on this kind of therapy? Exciting times. You know, we just, uh, as you always say, we need to be smart to use these options and, you know, just be ahead of the time by having access to these new drugs much earlier. Dr. Shadman, thanks so much for all the research you and your colleagues are doing up at the Fred Hutch. It's, it's amazing. Thank you so much. And thank you for your great support for patients and physicians at CLLT. Thank you. Thank you.